whatever we do about a new intro, I think I think the music has to stay. It it puts me in. I feel a shift when we play it that, oh, it's time for the Sunday show, which is where we are and what we're doing right now. Welcome to the Sunday show. It is May 7th, 2023, and we are here to take your calls about theism, supernatural beliefs, spirituality, religiosity, and, and all things there. And I am joined once again by the amazing, the illustrious uh, Matt Dillahunty. Wow. Yeah. And we're like a week away from Mother's Day. Just, oh. yeah, just I've, so that, you know, people are, don't think, because I forgot it was coming up until last night. Somebody reminded me, and I was like, oh, yeah, Mother's Day is coming up. And so that's next Sunday, not not today. So it, we don't have to worry about it at all today, which is why I mentioned it. Just for the people <laughs> who I know are going to panic about Mother's Day, you've got a week left. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, you you could have told me today was Mother's Day and I would have believed you. It's not it's not something I keep track of anymore. Uh Yeah. I'm I'm not a big carer about Mother's Day. I call my mom and that's it. Yeah, yeah, I won't be calling mine. Uh, <laughs> today, uh, sure. quick announcements before we jump into calls, and then we'll do the rest of the announcements later of the up, uh, upcoming week of shows. Uh, starting next week, we are going to experiment with, but see about starting the show an hour earlier. Uh, oftentimes, we run up against a hard stop on on most Sundays. We have a hard stop at 5 p.m. Central Time. Uh, this just gives us a little bit more room, ironically enough. We don't have a hard stop this week, which is part of why we didn't move it uh, yet and gave gave a little bit more time. So this week we'll we'll go when Matt and I are uh, are good and done. Um, anyway, uh, other than that, I'm I'm ready to start jumping into calls. If you're a theist, we'd love to hear from you. Atheists who have uh, some sort of challenge or something they're not they're having difficulty getting by or an argument they're having difficulty wrestling with, you're also welcome to call. Uh, but yeah, I'm ready to go when you're ready to go. Then I'm ready. We've got Blake here in the United States. Uh, no pronouns given. Wants to explain. Now I'm conf I'm I'm really confused. So welcome, Blake, who I is is listed as an atheist, but wants to say that it's rational to be a Christian. So hi, please enlighten us. Hi, thanks for having me. Sure. Um, I mean, I've listened to your uh, your show on occasion, and there's. I like a lot of what you say and what you're, how you interact with people. It's just that there are times where I don't always uh, like how you interact with the, the theists online. Most of the time I do appreciate it and I like how you handle them. Um, but there is, yeah, I don't, I don't care. I, I, what I care about I, is you're saying that it's rational to be a Christian. So I'd like you to tell me what yeah. do you mean by be a Christian and what do you mean by rational? I didn't, I didn't, inv you know, you're not on the show to, to tell us that sometimes you like what we say and sometimes you don't, we could do that all day. Yeah. That's, that's I feel fair. the same. Okay. Totally understand. Okay. So, so what do you mean by be a Christian rational. and why is it rational? So I would say it would be rational to be a Christian. Uh, in the United States, based on the government that we have, and wait, 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 how... wait, wait. stop, stop, stop. What do you mean, be a Christian? And how in the world can yeah. rationality be contingent upon the government of the United States? So let's start with, what do you mean by be a Christian? So follow the Christian faith as it is, or I would say the church, the church in America as which, it is. Which now. Christian church? Which Christian church? Which American Christian church? Because you realize there's over a thousand denominations. There are Protestant Christians, Catholic Christians, there's Presbyterians, Pentecostals, Baptists. Which one? Um, I would say all of them are rational in the way that I'm going to do it. <laughs> okay. So you're, you're already starting by declaring that mutually exclusive beliefs are rational. Yeah. Because they. They have beliefs that are in competition that can't both be true. I, so how is it? I just well, want to make one prediction. I'm, I'm going to stop because yeah, let's. I want to find out what the heck it means to be rational. I and I, as, as you two continue, I want to make one prediction. I my prediction is before this call is over, Blake is going to say rational was the wrong word. I meant pragmatic. But go on. Yeah, pragmatic is probably a better word for it. I, I, I'd say. Blake, oh, I suspect sake. that it's not a better word. I suspect you didn't mean rational. Not better word. Okay. I think it's the word you called in to defend, but you chose the wrong one. I could be wrong, but go on, Blake. I, I mean, I don't. I'll just so stop. Go ahead. I say it's rational to be uh, pragmatic. Is that a fair thing to say? 
is it rational to believe things that to, to believe that something is true if it's not true so this is one thing that i i take is it uh, rational I don't to believe like. that something is true if it's not true so what is belief i'm gonna, it, I'm gonna go belief is belief direction. is accepting belief is the position of accepting that a proposition is true or likely true my question was is it rational to believe that something is true if it is in fact not true I don't think something necessarily has to be true for it to be uh, to, for you to believe in it. I, I, I agree that something doesn't have to be true for you to believe in it. My question was, is it rational to believe something in the absence of a demonstration that it is true? Let's try that. Yes, I think it can be in certain circumstances. So, okay, then you and I have very different definitions of rational because I don't know how anyone can consider it rational, which rational would mean uh, in accordance with good reason, to believe something without a demonstration that it's true. Okay, uh, so... Uh, Is it rational to believe that monkeys fly out of my butt at night and do my laundry for me? I wouldn't say so. Why not? What makes that not rational? Uh, well, it's not pragmatic also. What the fuck does pragmatic matter to rational? So I would say it helps you it helps someone live their de their daily life in the United States specifically. No, no, no. I, I asked what pragmatic had to do with being rational. I I asked you if it was rational to believe that monkeys fly out of my butt and do my laundry at night, and you said no. And yet you believe that it's rational to believe that God incarnated himself and took human form and came down and sacrificed himself. I, to, I didn't say that God as exists. a substitute. I, I'm sorry, what? I didn't say God exists. I didn't say that you said God exists. Okay, Blake, you... stop talking and learn to listen. What I said was you said it was rational to believe that God exists and took human form and sacrificed himself to himself because that is the critical foundation of Christianity. And you said that it was rational to believe Christianity. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see where you're coming from. I... So it Maybe the reason you don't that... like the way we address theists is because you don't have a fucking clue what's going on here. I want you to tell me why is it rational, and if, you, if rational was just the wrong word, why, if it's merely pragmatic, like a good idea in the United States to act as if you're a Christian, is that all you're, you're, you're calling in to say is that it can be beneficial for people to act as if they believe something in the United States right now? So I was going to use that to pivot, uh, say that basically you can, you can believe that the God exists and then pivot from there to go from does belief need do you need objective truth to have a belief yeah that's where you, i was gonna go with it yeah where you're gonna go is irrelevant because you don't seem to understand the basics of rationality you don't understand christianity and so what i'm asking you now is let's set all that aside are you merely saying that an individual in the united states might benefit from pretending to believe Christianity. Yes. Who gives a fuck? Of course that's true. Of course, uh, uh, pretending to believe what the majority of people believe, pretending to be a part of the privileged majority is of course beneficial. Why on earth would you bother to call in to, 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 to defend something that is so obvious? Because I wanted to go into the connection between objective truth and belief. Okay. Um, so you, wow. when you uh, take on theists, you have almost a necessity to have objective truth brought in. No, sir. For any no, kind sir. Of belief. no, sir. No, sir. I That's ask people, comes. shut the up. I ask people what they believe and why. I'm not dictating that there must be a demonstration of objective truth. I am constantly talking about whether or not it is rational to believe. Rational, a word that you clearly do not comprehend, 
is what I'm talking about. That's why I asked you the question about whether or not it was rational to believe something that wasn't true, and then changed that to, to be, is it rational to believe something without a demonstration of truth? I wanted to know what your position was. At, 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 neither, at no point in, in the answering of that did I suggest that your view was incorrect or unjustified, um, because also, you're not a theist. So you're sitting here advocating for theism while not a theist, and while not understanding what it means to be rational in a belief. If your entire point is that people in the United States can benefit from acting as if they're a Christian, I already knew that. What, what's next? Okay, well, what I was going to go with was the objective truth and how that feeds into it. And I was assuming that you were going to go with the... Uh, you, I thought you were going to have a hard line with how I don't care you need what, to have. I, I don't care what you thought. Your right. thoughts about me are completely irrelevant and clearly wrong at every turn. What is your next point? I was going to ask you to, I was going to ask, are you, what kind of ethics do you believe in? What kind are of you, ethics do, uh, wow. Um, so I've given an entire lecture on the superiority of secular morality and an outline of my secular moral system, which begins with a few basic premises that life is generally preferable to death, that that uh, health is generally preferable to sickness, and that the, we judge the consequences of actions with respect to those goals. Um, it's a rather complex version of there's an aspect of consequentialism in there, but it's not simple consequentialism. Why does what I believe about morality and ethics matter to your point? My point is that there is as much belief in, or there's as much objective truth in that believing in what you believe ethically than it is to believe in a God that they exist. Yeah, that's no, that's I not think. true. That's not true, and it's not relevant because at no at no point does whether or not I have a wh whether I have a rational foundation for ethics, at no point is that relevant to whether or not it's rational for someone else to believe in a god. What what I, I personally believe is not relevant to whether or not belief in a god is warranted. Okay, I understand. I'm just gonna end it there. I'll let somebody else get, jump on the line. Well, you Blake, I want to know. I, I want to know what your definition of rational was at the beginning of this. It was. It's more of the. I was taking it as a pragmatic stance, as you as you assumed. Okay. Well, not assumed. So rational was never actually a part of it, or if it was a part of it, you were you weren't saying that a person can rationally believe in God, but that a person can can assess the question. Should I behave and tell people I believe in God can do have that conversation, I guess, with themselves rationally and then get to a pragmatic position? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, I don't just because there's no objective truth that God exists. I don't necessarily think that it's a terrible thing to believe in. I'm completely but not on okay. the basis of rationality first, right? I guess I'm going to have to look that up because I think we have a different understanding. Okay, is it, is, understanding. It, is it reasonable or logical? Those are the two uh, uh, elements of the definition of rational. So is it reasonable or logical to believe in God? Uh, I'd say it's reasonable. I'm okay with that. And upon what yeah. reasoning would you say that it is okay to believe in God? It makes your life better if that's how you want to live your life. That is not how you reason that belief in God is true. The The appeal to it makes your life better does not make it true. Reasoning would be... Uh, so I'm not saying that it's true. I'm you're just saying, saying it's, it's reasonable to be believe Christian. that it's true. You said it's reasonable to believe that it's to true. Be a Christian. Being a Christian involves believing that it's true, correct, Blake? I see it as following the 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 Bible. Yes, you can, and you the can Bible the says anyone. there's a God and that Jesus is God and that Jesus died for our sins and that these are the cornerstones of what Christianity is. 
I see, I've seen the, the Bible personally, because I did grow up as a Christian. As You've more seen of, the Bible personally? No, no. I, I mean, the way that I interpret the Bible, because I grew up with it, was... Yes, I as did I. As, yeah, as just stories that help uh, a moral foundation that you can build off of. And yeah, I think that's, that's not what Christianity someone. is. I'm I'm sorry that you have some armchair. This shit isn't real, but the book is useful. That's not Christianity. I, okay, I, there's a reason why I don't believe in that. I consider myself an atheist. I I am ex, I accept the morals. If someone has to believe in God, because there's I don't see a reason why someone. Um, well, I see why people would believe in God. It makes them feel better. It makes them feel better to believe in God. And it makes it feel better to have a community around them. I see that as a rational reason to believe in God. No, that, okay, wow. The people who you are saying are rational to believe in God, they believe it's true. They're not simply saying, hmm, it's convenient and benefits me to act as if I believe this. They believe it. Yeah. I like know. is it is it rational for a person to believe that I shouldn't be able to marry a man? I don't think that's rational. Okay, so how do I take a Christian who is believing on the rational basis according to you that it makes them feel better to believe that and say you cannot believe because it's irrational. What is the basis that makes it irrational? where they don't have to address their religion generally, the irrationality of their religion, of their Bible, which prohibits homosexuality, how is it, how do I go to that person and say it is irrational for you to believe your religion here, but it's not irrational for you to generally believe in your religion? It's, I can't so actually answer the question, that... I think. No, I, well, I mean, are you saying that uh, they so, uh, they have to support gay rights? They have to... I'm not saying anybody do, has do to do things? anything. I am saying that you have given two positions. It is rational to believe in Christianity, and it is irrational to oppose gay marriage, despite the fact that Christianity includes opposing gay marriage. So I have a Christian in front of me who says they believe in Christianity because it makes them feel better, and that, therefore, is rational. And I say to you, okay, well, it's irrational for you to believe that gays should not get married. And they respond, but that makes me feel better, too. So I am very much a relativist. I'm going to look at it from both points of view. You're not a relativist. You're a spitballer. No, I'm, I... I am a relativist. I believe that he, they can have that point of view and it be rational, and that also uh, gays should be able to. How? To Ex marry. Answer my question of how. The person sitting he in front of me. doesn't know what rational means. Right. The person sitting in front of me. I say, what, upon what basis do you believe in, in Christianity? And they say, it makes me feel better. And I go, okay, well, I agree with Blake. That makes it rational. Okay, now within that Christian belief, you must oppose gay marriage. How can you defend that? It's, I say it's irrational. And they go, no, that makes me feel better too. And I go, well, upon Blake's qualifications, that also becomes rational. But you're saying, yeah. no, it doesn't. So how? Explain to me how the first one is rational and the second one is irrational, despite the fact that the qualifications for being rational are the exact same and what you presented is acceptable. I'm saying that each person's going to have their own understanding of it. Oh my God, you're just not going to answer. Blake, I mean, did you say that, that rational means, did you say it is rational to believe something because it makes you feel better? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay, it makes me feel better for gay people to be put in camps. Is that rational? Thank you, Blake. The no, silence is deafening. Not. I, is this rational. is where you need to begin doing your work because I hope you realized just now what you said makes no fucking sense. And I mean this yeah, in the sweetest it, way possible. I really do, Blake. I want you to, I'm not mad at you. I want you to become correct 
and I want you to learn what rational means, and then apparently what reason means. It may be that you have to go a couple definitions deep to get there. But clearly, if you say something making you feel better is a rational reason to believe in something, and then I say, great, here's the thing that makes me feel better, and it's something ultimately harmful, you do not get to just now back off and say, as a relativist, that's now harmful. That or so that's now irrational. What if I put up the uh, the divider where it harms another person? Okay, so great. God, Christianity is now irrational. Thank you. Because there is no harmless Christianity. At minimum, it requires a faith basis, and faith is basically just trusting things because. And so if I go around and I have the most progressive form of Christianity, and I say, I accept this on faith, and everyone goes, well, we don't mind because that's harmless. And then somebody else says, great. I do suicide bombings and I, I, I arrange them because you can't do more than one yourself. I arrange suicide bombings and I accept that on faith. And we go, no, you don't get to do that. And I they go, well, he gets to. How a, come? That's a slippery slope argument right there. No, it isn't. It's literally the said. argument you're making. You, no, it is. You don't, just you don't get you don't to you don't get to highlight fallacies while you're abandoning reason. <laughs> you you just you just suggested that that you can define reason based on whether or not somebody else gets hurt. Reason doesn't give a shit if somebody gets hurt. It may in fact be reasonable for someone to get hurt. So in your yeah. attempt to rehabilitate your, your view of reason, you then suggested, well, I don't like the consequences of my first uh, definition about what's rational, whatever makes somebody feel good. So now I'm going to, I'm going to redefine what, what is rational or what is reasonable as whatever makes someone feel good conditioned on whether or not it hurts someone else. Well, that's not the way reason or rationality works, but even right. if it did, every single thing that we're talking about can potentially hurt someone else. Right? Potentially. Yes. Um, okay. I mean, the truth is not based on harm at all. That'd be like yeah, me defending Go on. Sorry. Go ahead. I, I, the, it would be like me saying like, uh, well, let me just ask you, Blake. Blake, is it rational to believe that chemo is often the best treatment for cancer? At this. That just yes or no. Yes. We all know I'm at this sure. point. I'm not. A, I didn't yes. ask in the yes. future in the past. Great. Yes. Yeah. Is it rational to believe that cancer exists? Yes. Wow, those are two really harmful beliefs. So it's not rational because chemo damages people. It's basically poisoning. And it's basically, let's start to kill you, hope the cancer dies first, and then we'll recover you from the poison. Uh, and cancer is just harmful. And believing that it exists, that's also harmful. So, boy, there that, goes my rational reason to believe in like either. A, that doesn't feel right. To, to yeah, it doesn't feel as, right when I apply man. your no, rational... That's a Straw man. No. To, to my oh my God. No, sir. No, it is no that sir, is Blake. And man. you don't, Blake, oh, you oh. don't get to make any accusations about fallacy. You have no reasonable foundation for anything. You're a relativist and you don't <laughs> understand what reason and rationality is. You don't get to say that someone else's view is a slippery slope or a straw man because those are contingent on syllogisms being logically valid in structure which you've so, tossed out the window by saying that rationality is based on whether or not someone feels like it makes them feel better. Your feelings and are fucking irrelevant to reason. And is contingent on harming another person, which I know what you're going to say is going to go back to the cancer. But I, there's also a, an aspect of um, consent there, where you're consenting to it. If you also use suicide bombing as like as a harm that's taking away consent from them to, from other people to live okay fine justify why should it be based on whether or not it harms another person why should everyone agree that that's the definition of rationality that it's qualified based on whether it harms another person or not uh because i well i can't think of a reason why i wouldn't um wait that's rationality wow. let, let me make wait, you the king of reason why would we do all right, great. Like you guys, if you guys want to end the call, we can end it. Like it's fine. Did did either of us say we wanted to end the call, Blake? I think you're the one who should go clearly, 
I need to go work through this and I am not in the correct position, but maybe I could go back with a pen and paper and arrange my thoughts and figure out how to articulate it. And in that same period of time, like let's say a week before next show, I could also get over sharing my pronouns since Blake is not a universal, uh, 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 it's not Blake Lively exists and that the chat might want to know what I, they should refer to me as. Maybe work I'm on both pieces private, of homework. I'm just a private person, bud. Okay, so I got you. You would prefer because shit, you've got Blake. your name Blake up, but you, you would prefer everybody uses the default pronouns are they, them, uh, because you're worried that if, they, if you give your actual pronouns, that will get people one step closer to doxing you, right? I, I, I'm, I'm just private like i don't know okay you're a troll like get the fuck out of here call back when you've worked through this shit you're that this is this is utter bullshit bye blake have a good one have a good one no thanks i'll have whatever kind i want yeah <laughs> in the biblical sense of kind hey let's talk about this week's upcoming shows uh they're they're pretty good and i had the list up in front of me a moment ago and i decided i guess oh i have it i do have it up uh very good shows coming up this week this Monday, which is tomorrow, you will have Skep Talk with John Gleason and a special new host that I don't think many of you will have met so far named Dr. Aaron Adair. I very much hope that I've said that correctly. I will be back to host Hostility this Tuesday with Seth Andrews talking about his book on ghost stories. By the way, if you want to call right now with some ghost stories that you want to uh, not not ghost stories as in fictional, as in, hey, I think I interacted with a ghost. We would love to take that call, 720-619-2288. I'll put up the name banner again so you can see the number. And there's a link in the description if you want to call from the web. Also, if you have a what you believe is a rational reason to believe in Christianity, as Blake failed so hard, if you think you can do better, I would love to hear from you. Or if you just believe in Christianity or God, I'd love to hear what your reasons are. And if you have a concession that it isn't uh, uh, rational, we, we would love that level of honesty too. Uh, either side, either side, we'd love to talk to you. Anyway, then on Wednesday, David Tamayo is rejoining uh, Matt. And th this time that will be produced from uh, Arden at Matt's place. So if the electricity and internet goes out, it will be much, much more surprising as he doesn't live in rural Texas like I do. Uh, and then Katie will be hosting a surprise guest on the Transatlantic call -in Show this Thursday. Matt and I will return the following Sunday. That's all I got. I'm ready to That's hit the next one. Funny. I tell you, we we um, so th there are lines open. I'm I'm getting ready to put the the next caller up here. Um, but in particular, I, I realize that that uh, Blake wasn't a theist, but was arguing for theism. So if you're a God believer who's just a okay with Blake being the representative that comes in to suggest that Christian belief is just a a cloak you put on for convenience in the modern world and doesn't require you actually having a belief or defending it. Cool. Don't bother calling in. If you're, if you're okay with Blake being the best representative of you, yeah. but if you're sincere and you're willing to fulfill your obligation under first Peter three fifteen and give the reason for the faith that's within you, then please call because I genuinely uh, have zero interest in having conversations with relativist atheists who don't understand anything about reason or Christianity, uh, as the, because I don't think they represent any significant portion of the population. I'd love to get some theists, and by the way, not just Christian theists. I mean, if you're if you're a, a Hindu, a Jain, yeah. a Baha'i, what you know, if there's some if there's something we're missing uh, from the world that you've managed to tap into and discover, super supernatural or otherwise. Um, call on and share that. Yeah, I mean, the rational basis that that atheist caller thought was that you basically, it's your rationality is that it makes you feel good. If you think you have a better reason than that, I'd really love to hear from you. Because uh, I don't disagree that that's why a lot of people believe. I disagree that that makes it believe, that that, that makes it uh, rational. Let's talk to... I just... I just Oh, I just posted in chat. Uh, yeah, you go ahead and, and decide and steer. Um, <laughs> I, was, I was getting ready to put one live based on that comment. I will say... Oh, you go ahead, put your one you like. Well, it's... it's Yeah, it's not a matter of like, but let's let's see sure. where we're at here. Um, Helios uh, from, is calling from Serbia. They then with some... Um, 
Some some sad news. What's going on, Helios? Well, a lot of stuff got fucked up, particularly the school shooting. And the really, really depressing thing about it is that the few people that are trying to get gun control underway are at least to my ears being drowned out by the people uh, begging for more guns more easily. I'm confused on what the question uh, the question is. So for people who don't know, there was a, a uh, school shooting in Serbia, uh, and that was in the last couple of days um, that killed eight people. And then I think it was the day before, if I'm correct, there was another one which killed nine kids in both cases. Is that correct? Yes. Yep. Um, and so you're saying that there is a uh, now a call to make gun ownership easier in Serbia? Is that what you're saying? I I don't know if it's a vocal minority, but they are not at all versed in law. The, the troubling thing about it is that a bunch of people are sympathizing with Andrew Tate, of all people. Yeah, and I know he's... He's popular in that area. Yeah. It's a troubling trend because it seems like Serbia is picking up all of America's garbage. First, the anti-vaxxers and the flat earthers, then the Trump movement, then the corona conspiracies, then the 5G conspiracies. And, and, and now acceptance over school shootings. I'm sorry, I'm I'm really depressed and they have no idea how I can help the situation with which is my only goal. Well, if we knew how to solve school shootings, we'd dedicate a show each week to it because we're you know, we we had a uh, in the last how what's the period of time, Matt? Do you remember how many days we've had two mass shootings here in Texas? Alan yesterday, and then there was another one like ten days prior to that. Was that what it was? I don't remember the one before it. I barely heard about the one yesterday in Allen. Yeah, we uh, and and I live. I, I want to say when I looked it up, it was about three hours from Uvalde, which is where children, uh, you know, nine and ten years old, were massacred uh, last year. I, you know, I, I, if you're calling to say like, hey, you know, as as atheists or as secular humanists, as activists, what do we do about this? Uh, this is not one that it's kind of like when people call in and say, how do I convert my parents or deconvert my parents? I don't know. I've yet to solve that issue. It's getting worse not, in every way I can measure. Not necessarily. Uh, I'm just trying to call attention to nations like Serbia that are for whatever reason, copying obviously failed garbage of other nations. I don't know how to yeah, solve I that issue either. And, and I don't know yeah. if that's even an accurate characterization. It's not like, um, it's not like the United States exported its bad ideas. Uh, it is, no. this, this is what happens when people with broken brains just get access to bad ideas. That's, that's what becomes, it's not, you know, I, I can understand how somebody could view it as, oh, it's a, it's an export from, you know, the United States or whatever else, but that's not it. The problem, there's a problem here and now there's a problem there and there's yeah. been a problem there. Um, but I don't know how to solve it. Um, I, I don't know to what extent it, it does or doesn't tie to religion, which is the primary focus of this show. But I mean, I realize we do other shows on the line that focus on these things. And I've had entire shows about school shootings and the like. Um, I, I don't know what the solution is here and I don't know enough about Serbia to know what the potential solution is there. Yeah. I feel bad cause I feel like you're calling looking for answers and, and 
Yeah, obviously yeah. we're saying I I wish I knew. I told Jimmy right before I clicked on the thing, I I put a message in chat that said I really don't want to take this next call. And the reason I said that is because all I can do is sit here and listen to heartbreak and go, yeah, it sucks. I, I don't have a single idea and nothing um, productive to add on it. it it's. Yeah. Yeah. I, I genuinely have no clue what to say. Uh, for reference for people, if anyone was wondering what I was referring to it, uh, on April 28th, in Cleveland, Texas, an individual executed an entire family in their home, uh, I think outside their home, and it killed all five people. Um, and that was, yeah, literally a few days prior. There was also a shooting that injured four people between those two dates. So we're talking in a 10-day period, three things that qualify as mass shootings, two of which claim the lives of more of five or more people. Um, the other one, which injured, I think it was four people. Uh, yeah, it's the, it's to the specific solution of mass shootings. I, I've gone quite the other side now of it where I, the gun issue me? is, yes, I hear you. Uh, let me just finish real quick. Uh, as far as my own activism oh, goes, no, the audio. Oh, oh God, what happened to the audio? It's all right. Uh, Helios, we'll just drop you and, and finish up after, uh, uh, off, off call. Um, I've got kind of the other side of it where now the gun stuff is so out of control here and I don't see a, 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 a solution. The things I've been saying is if you're queer or if you're trans, if you're in an oppressed minority, go buy a gun and learn how to safely store it and use it. Because at this point, uh, I don't I don't know what else to do. I actually do feel safer living in rural Texas because I own an assault rifle and other guns. Um, and, and because I'm a part of an oppressed minority, though I'm not visibly queer, people don't usually clock me, but I am a public figure, uh, as well, standing up for queer people. And that's, that's why I have guns. So yeah, I, it, it's, it's a tough thing. Cause all we can sort of do is just go, you know, I, I have the mass shootings in 2023 archive in front of me for the U S and I don't see a date on here, uh, except for that it skips weekends. It maybe looks like. Uh, it looks like every day of the month of May, except the first, has at least two. Mm. And it's we're seven days in. It's wildly terrible, and I don't know I don't know how to solve it. Um, and and again, I'm sort of on the other side of it. It's now so bad that we need to think about who doesn't have guns in America and who does, and think about who doesn't have guns that should. Otherwise, they may be in a more precarious situation. So, yeah, I agree with Matt that there was no way for that call to not suck. Not because of Helios. Helios, yeah, I think it, it you didn't do really anything so. at all wrong, yeah. Helios. It's, it, you know, I, I think there's a, I, I, I get so frustrating. I mean, it's like, uh, it's like when people call in and they're like, oh, so and so just got cancer. And, yeah. And, uh, I, I have nothing that I, I can do about it. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I feel it's one of those things where people who are part of some religious tradition will certainly feel as if they have something to do or something to say on the subjects like, Oh, we'll pray for you. Or, you know, God had a plan or, you know, this, that, and the other. And it makes them feel as if they've said something uh, productive when they in fact have not. And I, I know that it's not productive and <laughs> And so I just sit here and flounder as, well, I don't want to toss out platitudes. I don't want to pay lip service to a problem. Um, I want to actually say things that are productive and useful that might help a problem. And I got nothing. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Texas and mass shootings, I just counted. There are 17 in just this year so far in Texas. In 2023, 17 mass shootings. Second, uh, following this shooting, uh, I had seen this earlier today. I'm trying to find Representative uh, Keith Self, 
who is the representative for Allen, Texas, where the mass shooting happened yesterday, was asked about or, or told by a news anchor on CNN that many people are arguing that prayers aren't cutting it, that thoughts and prayers is not a good enough thing to say. And yeah. rather than this representative say, okay, well, here's the other stuff we're doing. Like, yes, thoughts and prayers aren't enough, and it's the best when the thoughts and prayers turn into actions. I'd even be fine with them saying that that's prayer side. Like, we like it best when prayer means that people feel inspired to whatever. I, I'd let it go. He instead pushed back and said, well, those are people that don't believe in an almighty God who has, who is absolutely in control of our lives. When a representative, a person who is responsible, because Helios called us, we're just two fuckers in Texas. That's all we are. A representative, the person who should be taking action, who should be doing something, was basically asked, we're worried you're not taking any action. We're worried that you think thoughts and prayers are what handles this and are going to do nothing else. And the Allen, Texas representative said, well, that criticism is only going to come from basically godless people, that that's people who don't believe in the might of God. And meanwhile, Blake, I hope you're still watching. Because while there may be practical benefits to someone acting as if they're a Christian, someone actually being a Christian in this society is someone like that representative. Someone who, instead of taking actions that might might reduce school shootings, is instead taking the actions that increase it, turning yep. it over to God. God is in charge of everything. God is here. There's nothing we can do to thwart God's plan. If God wants a global warming to kill us, then it will. If God wants some kid to go in and shoot up a school, then he will. That type of God belief, which Blake clearly has no, no interaction with and no comprehension of at all, is not just a, hmm, let me run around and act like I'm a Christian because then I'll be with the majority and that's going to have benefits. That's not what it means to be a Christian. And no, to the person in chat earlier who tried this, I'm not talking about a no true Scotsman fallacy. I didn't. I, I went with all the different denominations, um, some of whom would say that the others are not true Christians. I just wanted to know which of them it appealed to. But at a minimum, Christianity, at a minimum, involves this belief in Christ. Now you could do. You could go down the Thomas Jefferson road, and say, oh, Thomas Jefferson took the Bible cut out all the supernatural elements, and just kept like the moral teachings of Jesus. So yeah. you could be an atheist and be a Christian. Uh, I'm an atheist who likes the stuff that Jesus says, and yet still, that's not going to get you the benefits. Um, if you're like, if you try walking into a Southern Baptist church and say, oh, yeah, no, 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 God's not real and Jesus isn't real, but I really like what he said. I mean, that it, it is bizarre yeah. to think that you've cracked um cracked the, the the benefits of religion by thinking like that and then you, you would have to ignore everything that jimmy just said about this representative who thinks that oh yeah it'd be really nice maybe if we did something it'd be really good if there was action but it's all in god's hands yeah yeah not just but and that god is controlling us was the phrase he used that god is in control of us so apparently god was in control of the shooter too and yep. the, the dead kids at the mall, that was all God's choice. And look, this doesn't yeah. comment on whether God is real or not. That God could doesn't not exist because he wouldn't do that, right? If a God exists, it, that's not the, a commentary on the truth, but it is a commentary on the harm and the belief that you're asking us to accept. Yep. Yeah. Well, we've got some more callers here. Um, yeah. I'll try and get on to some of them. There's uh, Andre calling from Switzerland, who evidently uh, wants to talk to me about the fall of man. So welcome to the show, Andre. Pronouns are he, him. Thank you're, you. You're on live on the Sunday show. So, yeah, um, actually, I called the show in October and tried to talk about the subject. Perhaps because English is not my first language. And also perhaps I... I don't know. I, I made you very angry, <laughs> you know, and I was just curious because I, I think that 
the fall of man properly uh, deconstructed could leave all the monotheistic religions in a very bad uh, situation up to the point that they are not able to, I don't know, to justify uh, themselves. Because uh, first, uh, if there were, there, there was a, a paradise, the moment Adam and Eve committed the fall, all the laws of physics must have changed. And some uh, sign of this must be still uh, to be found. So that's the first uh, thing. And second is uh, each and every time, or almost every time I watch a debate, I see, for example, uh, Ray Comfort. He was debated, debating, I don't, I don't remember who. And then uh, Comfort went like, you know, between each heartbeat of you, death is lurking, you know? And um, it's kind of, he emphasizes this uh, so-called responsibility of men because of all the, the evils that, that exist, like it's um, also explained in Romans uh, chapter 8. I'm, I'm not, I don't remember. So, what do you think? Okay. If there was a paradise and an atom, then the God story is true, which means there can't be something that Cause, that can't cause a downfall for Christianity. Mm -hmm. But you said that the moment Adam sinned, that had to change all the laws of physics. How did you mm -hmm. reach that conclusion? Because it says that all the creation was perfect and not... No, I, I'm no, not it sure. doesn't. No, it doesn't. Oh, okay, okay. So... Could you explain me? Because, you know, I was raised as a Catholic, and Catholics, has a, have, we have a pretty awful understanding of the, the basics of Christianity, okay? So I'm curious because of, uh, about this. Could you... Well, um, what made... I'll, I'll explain in a second. What made you think that all the laws of physics must have changed? Why, why not just one law of physics had to change? Why did you say all laws of physics must have changed? Sorry, uh, I made a mistake. Some of them. Um, okay, most which ones? Likely, uh, the second law of thermodynamics. Why did that I, have I to change I, when... I, why does that have to change Adam, just because Adam's Adam, Adam, Yeah, because um, it's supposedly before Adam and Eve uh, have sinned, Things did not deteriorate or That's not true. went rotten. I, I don't know. What, what, where, where did you hear that? I hear and, and nowhere. I, this is a conclusion, a false one, uh, perhaps. So, so, so something you haven't heard from anywhere, you just thought up and then decided to use that as a foundation to claim that physics must have changed? I am not sure. I'm not a religious man. I'm just curious if I'm following um, the right path in f thinking this way. No, no wonder. I'm... No wonder you really pissed me off back in October. Okay. Here's the thing. Uh, if you're calling in uh -huh. to say that the fall of man demonstrates a problem for the religions that include the fall of man, and you don't mm -hmm. know anything about the fall of man, and you don't seem to know anything about the religions, and you don't seem to know anything about what the religions actually say, how on mm -hmm. earth can you struct, construct an argument that supposedly knocks down a religion mm -hmm. when you admit that you mm -hmm. don't have any foundation for it? Um, again, I am not stating it. I'm just curious, because... Um, uh, um, um, curse is the the earth because of you, okay? And it says that this. I assume that this put the the whole planet. I don't know, in a condition of uh, of uh, all things to deteriorate. Uh, I don't know. 
I like your your impressions. I am not from. I am not at all from. A why on earth? Uh, why on earth? About, why why uh, on earth would I give you impressions of some bullshit that you pulled right out of your ass? Why? Why, <laughs> why would I spend time trying to rebut uh -huh. something? that has nothing to do with what people actually believe or with what the Bible actually says. Okay. If, if it's, if it offends you, I'm sorry. Okay. You it's can... not an offense thing. I'm genuinely trying to, all right, okay. Uh -huh. I'm genuinely trying to understand how, why uh -huh. it is that you think that you've discovered a problem with the fall of man when you don't mm -hmm. know what the Bible says and you don't know what the impact was. Mm-hmm. How do you well, find a problem um, with something? Yeah, uh, I am trying to discover if I'm right or not. And I think you are the best person in the whole world to, to tell me this. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, you're trying to figure uh, out if you're right it. or not. You're trying uh, to figure out if you're right or not. Y yeah. That's, you that's said it. you that's are. It. Stop talking. You said you're trying to find mm -hmm. out if you're right or not. Why on mm -hmm. earth would you suspect that you're right about something that you just pulled out of your ass? <laughs> I'm, I suspect, but I'm not sure. That's uh, only that uh, all of this, okay? Because uh, the, the impression, uh, uh, I mean, the impression is that when the act of two human beings make all the universe to go awry. This uh, simply, simply cannot be. That that's that's what is uh, written, or this is a message of the the fall of man, or or, or isn't, or is well, it? Where is that written? Um, if God says to Adam, "Curse, uh, the the earth is cursed because of you." No human being was able to, with any action in the past, in the present, and most certainly in the future, to make the whole earth uh, curse. Just an example. Can a, a single human being or two human beings, with just all, one act of eating a fruit or disobeying God, to make the whole of the creation rotten and um, causing all the evils that we can um, imagine. No, no human being was ever able to do this. It's God that did that as a punishment. Adam uh -huh. sinned, violated what God wanted to do, and that allowed mm -hmm. sin to exist in the universe, which God permitted. Mm -hmm. God, okay. God, the creator of the entire universe, can create it in a new way, can cause it to fall, can cause it to be corrupted, can cause it to be restored. I, I, are you mm -hmm. suggesting that God couldn't do that? Well, so that from that, I would like to go to another point. Um, no, let's if, let's finish this fucking point. Okay. I asked a question. Are you suggesting that God couldn't do that? I, yes, because God seems to be, from the very beginning, a slave to his own laws. <laughs> he submits, not, not so much it seems to be in the no. Old Testament, but surely in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, sure. did God create the universe and everything in it? Yeah. In so the, could, in the, in if, if God Testament. can do that, are you suggesting that the God that can create the universe can't change it? I don't, I'm not sure. If we use the New Testament um, as an um, explanation or a conclusion of this God policy, let us call it this way, um, it's all over the place. The New Testament says that Look, it must be look, so because look, of God's law. Stop. Okay. If God can create the universe, can God also mm -hmm. create another universe? It, I don't know. 
if he's an omnipotent? Oh, for fuck. For no, no, no. This, this is why it's a fucking waste of time because you are so stuck on mm -hmm. your thing that you can't even answer something that is obvious that a fucking five-year-old could answer. If God has the power to create an entire universe, why would you think that God couldn't create another universe? He's done it yeah. once. Yeah, he can. Okay. Okay. He's able so to, if, can, able can to God and, also and, uh, think, stop? Uh -huh. These are yes or no questions. Anything other than yes or no comes out of your mouth until I'm done, you're done. Okay. Now, if God could create this universe, can God also destroy that universe? Yes. So if God created this universe and decided that if sin enters this universe, he wants to change this universe, couldn't God destroy this universe and then create a new universe in that change state without anybody noticing. Yes. So, because God can change the universe. God can make a universe. Mm -hmm. God can, can destroy a universe, and God can change the universe, correct? Correct. Okay. Now I'm done with that point. You can go ahead and explain why it is that it was so difficult for you to say that God can change the universe if he can create one. Okay, um, if God could dispose of this universe, change it without us to noticing or not noticing, whatever, um, the, the sacrifice of Christ wouldn't be necessary. <laughs> and we can go, we can That's not uh, relevant. go back. Okay. That's not relevant at all to the fall okay. of man. God can choose to ameliorate mm -hmm. the problem however he wants. He could do it in yeah. taking human form and sacrificing himself to do a blood sacrifice. He could do it mm -hmm. by creating the world's biggest lamb or sheep, a magical lamb or sheep that's as big as uh, a, a blue whale, and have them sacrifice that. He could just say, hey, I'm just going to forgive you all with no sacrifice necessary. Why on earth mm -hmm. are you talking about the fall of man and then saying if God can create and, and change the universe, then that makes the sacrifice of Christ unnecessary? Who cares? Oh, okay. Because uh, it wouldn't be easier because, you see, in Matthew, when he's uh, after he, Jesus is arrested, he says, oh, it's... Uh, uh, it must it must be this way. It it must be this way. It was necessary for the Son of Man to to I don't know the word in English to suffer and to be, uh, be dead and resurrect on the third day. Yes, that means if that we, means that we, this if, happened the way God wanted it to happen. Oh, not because he's limited by his own laws. Okay, my mistake. <laughs> I thought that this would be a proof, a, a, a proof that uh, an omnipotent God shouldn't be, uh, should to bow himself to any context, that he could manage this fall stuff. You see, and instead of saying to each and every Christian or monotheistic person, oh, you at the and in essence, you are to be, to be blamed, okay? Because if if God were if God uh, were omnipotent, oh, Jesus must have suffered. This was necessary. No, it wouldn't be necessary at all. <laughs> That's my point. Why should law bow himself to his own laws? I'm an omnipotent being does not need laws. I think. <laughs> okay. That's just my point. But I may be okay. wrong. I, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a believer. Andre, yeah, anything. I think we just want to move on at this point. Call okay. a Christian, call a Christian call in show and try these arguments. Yeah, and I think them. we'll see what happens. Yeah. Jesus. I sent you a, you can ignore it now because I, I, I think you didn't see it. I sent you a, uh, uh, DM on Facebook just asking like would you be offended if I cut in and talk about how boring I'm finding this call because I didn't want if you were having a good time I didn't want to cut you off 
I was no, not having a good I just, time. Because, because he called and it didn't go well in October, I wanted to give him another chance. Yeah. And I was desperate to try to figure out what's what's going on here. No, and, and by the way, I've been chatting in vMix because that, that's the screen oh, I can actually see the whole time we're, we're there. Got it. Okay. Uh, I know that now. Um, yeah, I... Uh, uh, okay, yeah, I'm just going to move on from that. Uh, let me just say, I, I want to explain the poll that I put in chat, and then we're going to take the next call. There's a poll right now. This is what it says. Would you send a polite YouTube short inviting theists to call our shows to a theist you know? Uh, this is a marketing thing that we're going to try out. You're going to get several different versions for several different shows. It might be me. It might be Matt. It might be, uh, this wouldn't only be the atheist shows though. That is specific to the question. It could be a host of Skeptalk. And we're just going to create a series of YouTube shorts. That'll go something like the short just says, Hey, if you're watching this video right now, the person who sent it to you thinks you should call and talk to us about whatever topic. Uh, you can check the next show when the next show is at our website, or if it's a consistent show, we're on every Sunday or whatever else. I know I just mentioned the website. I plan to have it finished and up this weekend. Didn't happen, uh, but hopefully we'll, we'll be launching this week. So that is the explanation of the poll. If you want to vote on that in chat on whether or not there are theists in your life that you would send that video to that just says like, Hey, you're receiving this. Cause, uh, someone, the person who sends it wants to see us chat, wants to see us talk about your, your beliefs. Uh, and, and, and so, yeah, go ahead and vote on that. Otherwise that's the, the only other thing I wanted to do before the next call. Yeah, it, it's, um, I, I, I'd be interested in seeing that because I want to make sure that you know, I, I've had people like get their mom to call in, but they just seem to want their mom to be embarrassed. They want right. somebody else to do it. Uh, and you know, okay. Uh, I, I'm not, I don't ever want to actually do that. It's not, that's not my goal yeah. to embarrass anybody. Even, uh, even when we're talking to, um, callers today, it, it is, I really want to try to find and, and get clarity and get understanding on what's going on. And so, yeah, I would love for people to say, hey, um, I'm going to send a, a, an invitation to interact uh, to, you know, my aunt, my uncle, whoever. Yeah. And um, I think that'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and lots of fun. I think to me, it's I understand because I've been in this position before. It was a few years back, but I understand the position of going, I it's not that I don't know the right things to say. It's that in the moment, in the heat of the moment, I seem to fail to articulate or they word things in a way that I have. Uh, and, and it's, it's meant to be more of a, like, these people are better are, are, are good at articulating my thoughts or articulating my challenges to these things. And in the moment, maybe I'm not, or maybe this is a person that I'm uncomfortable doing that with. Maybe it's, you know, I don't, uh, uh, it, it's tough to do that with this specific person because there are eggshells or something. Uh, and yeah, I think that, I, I think it could be a really, really positive thing. Um, yeah. But yeah, whichever call you like next, I'm ready to go. All right. Sophie in Germany, pronouns are she, they, uh, wants to talk a little bit about determinism and the consequences of it. So yeah. How you doing, Sophie? Welcome to the line. Hello. I'm, I'm doing okay. Uh, first off, big honor to talk to you both. Um, and the second thing is, uh, yeah, I want to talk about determinism, how um, Jimmy described it. And I, because my English isn't perfect, I may have to ask clarification on some of the terminology. So I, um, I'd honestly yeah. like to jump as if we can. I know you said the thing about English. Let's try jumping to the core of it because it's it's yeah. one of these things that people keep bringing up, and it's seriously the most meaningless conversation because whether or not free will exists, whether or not the deterministic model is true or not, nothing should or would change about your day-to-day -day life, how you treat other people, whether you're legitimately making choices or you're, uh, you know, suffering an illusion of making choices, there is no real distinction from the individual experience. So, uh, if we can no, start no, no, with no. just the core question, I, I think that's probably best. Yeah, uh, I, I understand that. Um, my my thing is rather that um, like when you talk take calls and people are I don't know stubborn or can't answer questions or are incapable of understanding things or uh, whatever. Um, 
then you you get frustrated obviously um and stuff but uh aren't they like are they even to blame for that under under your uh, idea of determinism? I think that you're going to find that Matt and I and everybody else on this channel are willing to have these conversations. Sure, we get angry and frustrated. Uh, and if they're not to blame, we're not necessarily to blame for that either. However, we get angry and frustrated, but we're doing this because we have empathy for people in a position of having staunch belief in something irrational because we used to as well. And so there's a value in those conversations. The conversations and even the anger and all of that stuff that you might sometimes see are about trying to get people out of a thing we were once in as well. There are some people who weren't ever religious that also see a value in it, and there's there's different uh, values. But for me, the number one reason I'm doing this is because I have a philosophy that is uh, I phrase it with a stolen phrase from the Bible that I had just one word with. It might be from the Bible. It might just be Christians at large. But I use the phrase, there but for the grace of circumstance go I. I think everybody in the world is capable of being everybody else. I think everybody's capable of being the best person who ever lived and the worst person who ever lived, and that the difference is most often circumstance. Uh, and because of that, and because I consider myself fortunate to have been born into a terrible circumstance— which I then emerged from and now have beliefs for good reasons and stuff, my motivation for this is to help other people. Whether or not the universe is ultimately deterministic, as in everything that's happening now was never going to happen any other way, has no bearings on it at all. The, the, I believe the caller was saying that when somebody calls in and frustrates us, given a deterministic view, is it their fault? Yes. Wasn't that the question? Uh, yes, part of it, I think. Okay. Uh, yes, it's still their fault, but even <laughs> if it's not, isn't it not my fault for responding the way I respond? No, yeah, you you are determined to for that as well, yes. Uh, cool. But that's, that's so, why I'm... So, so why, why bother addressing it? <laughs> I, I just... I don't know. I just want to understand. The yeah, you're addressing what, it because you don't have any choice but to address it. So my <laughs> question then is, why keep the call going? And if we're only keeping the call going to whatever extent that determinism is determined that I'm going to drop it. See, the thing is, it doesn't matter to me whether their acts were an act of true free will or just deterministic volition. Um they're still the agent that I'm going to have to talk to. They're still the yeah. one that can be corrected and changed with information. And maybe um, the deterministic position is after that conversation, I've now altered the programming of that agent so that they don't do that in the future. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why I wanted to ask Jimmy, for for a clarification on the determinism thing so because sure. i agree that we probably uh depending on what information we have where we uh grow up what happens etc that we only have kind of one choice that we definitely will do a certain thing but then i would say that it would make sense that you um that you can change someone's uh, determined path by giving them new information and which they can now make better choices with. Sure. Sophie, the, 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 the short before. version is this. There are a lot of people who are believers and Matt and I and everybody else on this channel would like to help disillusion them of that if their belief is not justified, which seemingly is all of the theists. Uh, there is a whether or not the universe is deterministic or not, doesn't matter, for them to go from their state of belief to non-belief, some series of events will have to happen. And it's my position that we are going to increase the number of people who go from belief to non-belief by doing shows like this and having conversations like this. And sometimes they get heated. And sometimes that's the benefit of the audience who is listening for the more for the benefit of the audience who is listening and for the person who is trying to evaluate if things are rational. And sometimes it's more for the benefit of the person we're speaking to. Regardless of if the universe is deterministic or not, a series of events will be between those two positions of unbelief or of belief and then unbelief. And we're just trying to increase the number of those 
regardless of whether we had a choice to do so or not. Yeah. And choice is always the stupid word for this because it, it, honestly, even if we are deter, even if the universe is deterministic, we still experience making choices. It's just a matter of whether or not there was ever a, an actual possibility that we were ever going to make a different choice than we did. But the experience of making choices clearly still happens. The experience of happiness and sadness clearly happens. And so, yeah, what, what, what motivates those series of steps in between doesn't matter, but we're here either choosing to, or having the illusion of choosing to, to try and help with that. And, and that's sort of it. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that maybe I have troubles to explain my issues with, with it. I mean, what you say makes sense, of course. Is there something but, still missing? Otherwise, I want to move on. Is there something that you're still saying, like, it that still doesn't account for X, Y, or Z, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I... I, I will think about it and, and maybe talk, uh, call in another time. All right, I'll give you one okay. last thing, yes, Sophie. Probably. Do we actually know whether the universe is deterministic or not? No, no, absolutely not. So then don't we have to behave as though it is not, that as though we do have choices? Do yeah, we have any other I'm, choice? I'm totally with that. That, that is, uh, I'm absolutely with that point, yes. Yes. But, I think it was Hitchens yeah. said something. I, I'm going to morph it. I behave as though the universe is not deterministic because I have no other choice. Yeah. Sort of a funny, ironic statement, but if you think about it, it's rather <laughs> profound. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Yep. Okay. But look forward Thanks to new forward. merch, which says uh, on it, the Big Bang decided I would buy this T-shirt. That's coming. I just oh, decided in this one. moment. Get it. <laughs> okay. <That's a> <laughs> Thanks, Sophie. All right. Thanks. Bye. Somebody remind me to make that merch because I will forget in three minutes. Okay, everybody in chat. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's get on it. Remind Jimmy to make that t-shirt. Jimmy at QA line.com. He hasn't already made it. I yeah, that's true. I um I will wear that shirt. I, I actually think that's a really funny I shirt. I would too. Yeah. Wow. So we've got Sovereign in Washington, DC. Welcome to the Sunday show. You're on the line live. Hey, can you all hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Hello? Hello. Awesome, awesome. So, um, yeah, so something I wanted to, to talk about, especially while we have Matt here, and uh, Jimmy, I'd definitely love to hear your perspective on the topic, <laughs> is I think, Matt, you might be leaving a few arguments on the topic of slavery on the table, so I just kind of wanted to address those. I, I don't know what you mean, so go ahead. Real quick, before we do, Sovereign, can right. you isolate from the sound in the background? And if we're on speakerphone, take us off of it, because this is pretty unpleasant. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm doing my best here, man. I'm doing no, I get it. Here. I get it. I'm not trying to yeah. be mean. I'm just obsessive right. about it. I do it to my friends on private Zoom meetings, too. So if that makes you feel right. any better. Is that better for you guys? I think so. Go ahead, Sovereign. Okay, awesome. So one of the first things that I've noticed, of course, that music starts when I get somewhere. All right. Um, well, one of the first points that I wanted to make was that whenever the topic comes up, the first thing that theists want to do is they kind of want to just isolate it as much as they can from chattel slavery. They like to go on to topics like the minor points of the terms of slavery, uh, the conditions, et cetera, et cetera. But the issue I kind of have with that is even if we kind of concede all of those points that they're attempting to make, they're still kind of arguing for an exploitation of the lower class and it would still be immoral regardless. So that was just, I just kind of wanted your thoughts on that. Did you watch my video on my Patreon project about what the Bible has to say about slavery? Uh, <laughs> no, nah, I may not have seen that one. I mainly just be on the, uh, atheist experience i'm just now realizing that you were on jimmy's show i've done a whole 30 minute video on my personal atheist debates patreon project supported youtube channel with everything the bible mm -hmm. says about slavery and how even if it was only talking about something like indentured servitude that would still be immoral 
Oh, okay. All right. Well, I stand correct on that one. Um, but the second thing that I kind of wanted to brought up, and this was another point that I haven't really heard much of anybody bring up, but, and I'm going to citate the Bible for this next one, but if you go to where Ephesians 6 is, that's where Ephesians brings up the topic of slavery, and it pretty much tells slaves to obey their masters, and then it goes on to uh, tell slaves not to threaten their slaves or anything like that. Um, and that's in Ephesians 6. Now, whenever that gets brought up, they want to talk about how that was written for a specific place in a specific time. But something that's always been interesting to me is if you go to Ephesians 5, this is the same book where they are telling wives to submit to their husbands. Now, something that's been very funny to me about that is they kind of flip-flop. You can say that that was written for a specific place in a specific time, but why is the same thing not said about the wives? But the reason why I ask that is because the context that we are in is ultimately changed. Like this was written during a time where um, the women were essentially considered property. Now we're in a time and we're in a culture where, you know, women are able to work, they're able to choose their own husbands and all of that, but they still feel like this passage, that this passage still stands. However, when you go to this other one where it's talking about the slaves, they say that was written for a specific time in a specific place. And I just don't understand why is it that they feel the need to flip flop between those two points. Um, they can say that with the wives, this is the ultimate culture. This is the order, the hierarchy that God had intended. But I mean, the same thing can be said about the passage of the, of the wives. And again, you can say that the passage of the slaves was written for a specific time. In a specific right, you're in a loop place, here, Sovereign. Same, you're, you're, you're caught in a loop here. Yeah, no, no, you're good. You'd have to ask them, but yeah, I don't, cause, like, we do make that distinction. We do make the point that there isn't much difference. Biblical marriage, from the perspective of the woman, and biblical slavery aren't far from each other if they are. Not right, only that, but right. I, when I engage with theists making excuses for slavery, um, well, first of all, we almost never talk about Ephesians 6. Um, mm. I'd probably rather go to 1 Peter 2.18, but I don't know that any of them have ever suggested to me that Ephesians 6 only applies in that specific place or time. I, I don't hear that apologetic, but if, if I did, I would point out to them, no, that's bullshit. You don't get to say that this only applied then and that God was somehow secretly against slavery this whole time. Um, you don't get to invent something that's not in the Bible. At no point does God come out against slavery, period. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And well, I guess what the point I was trying to make in with that was um, I wasn't specifically, well, I did say Ephesians 6, but whenever the topic of slavery with the Bible, period, comes up, they always go to that was written for a specific place in a specific time. And I just figure with those two passages so close together, I just found a bit of an inconsistency there. It's not well, even you that can good. Do the same sorry. Thing. sorry. Yeah, you could do the same thing with Exodus 21. If they try to say, well, that only applied <laughs> back then. Oh, then what does that, is that true for the other commandments? Is that true for everything else in Exodus 21? Um, no, it's cherry right. picking. And you, and you point that out, as I've done for 20 years. But even if they wanted to stick to their guns, yeah. why is that a good argument? When what my response to somebody who would say that was that for that time, I would ask, so when do you think slavery was okay? Yeah. No, right. that's the follow-up. I yeah. all of this is in my video about slavery that Sovereign didn't watch. I knew I had heard it somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sovereign, yeah, go watch the video. I, I you seem like a great person. Yeah, that's fine. Just go watch the video. You're, you're thinking you're thinking about stuff, and that's fine. Yeah. And and you know. It, I find it, I don't find it, it, it's not problematic. It's mostly amusing that somebody thinks I've been doing this for 20 years and didn't pick up on that one little note. Yeah. <laughs> I found the yeah. one you missed. Yeah, well, I didn't mean to, you know, call you into question or anything. Like, I just personally no, haven't good. heard it, so I, I just figured it was it's up in good. the air. <laughs> yeah, I, it's good, because I might not have, fun. and there's been plenty of times when people point out stuff I have missed, and I have missed things for decades on occasion. Mm -hmm. It's all good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, I definitely appreciate y'all's time, and uh, I'll definitely check that out. If someone could send that in the 
uh, chat. I'll definitely check it out. Wow. Cool. See, now you're crossing a line. Learn to use Google. I told you it's on my personal YouTube channel in my fucking Atheist Debates project. I bet if you do a Google search for Atheist Debates Slavery, matter of fact, let's just do that. Atheist Debates Slavery and see... Uh, oh, wait. It's literally... Nope. It's not the first thing that popped up. But it's probably on there if I click videos. I want to... Yes, it's the second thing. Atheist yeah. debates, slavery, and bad apologetics. So if you type atheist debates, slavery, somehow Frank Turek comes up first, but that's only a one-minute video. And then there's a 35-minute video. And that's the one that's uh, yeah. important. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now, and I'll, uh, I'll check that out now. Thank you. Rock on. I'd, I'd also check out the one. I think it's on your channel as well, Matt, but it might be a replay. But you did a debate with Dr. Bowen as your companion, and that's a really good one. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, we did yeah, uh, debate and discussion chat yeah, with Bowen. Yeah. Thanks, Simon. All right. Uh, well, I don't think Jimmy's going to like this one much either, but I could be wrong. Yeah, let's And we find have out. Arlindo in the UK. Welcome to the line. You're on the Sunday show. I do like Arlindo. Oh, how's it going, uh, Matt and Jimmy? Hello, Arlindo. You okay, yeah? Yeah. We yeah, got you I good. Hope, I hope this subject doesn't bore you, um, you know. I don't know if you've come across it before, but uh, I've been reading a book called Sentience and I come across this problem. I haven't finished the book, by the way, uh, and I'm on the fence about this problem, but uh, I don't know, maybe I might be able to play devil's advocate. So it's basically Frank Jackson's Mary's Room knowledge argument. You yeah, it's an, me, argument yeah? For qualia. it's an argument for qualia and I reject oh. qualia and I think the argument is flawed. I didn't know you knew how much I hated qualia conversations. I appreciate that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I remember that. And basically, I, I couldn't help but use the, the term, you know, instead of just uh, saying, oh, the, the sensation of red and this and that and the other, I just used it to uh, to be quick on the subject at that time. But, yeah, so so basically he, um, he says that she can have comprehensive descriptions about color inside the black and white room. But... Frank Jackson says when she steps outside and experiences the colorful world uh, firsthand, that she gains new knowledge, and therefore he claims that physicalism must be false. Uh, I mean, I've, I've heard uh, Dan Dennett saying that she actually doesn't uh, learn anything new because she, um, you know, he says something like functional knowledge is identical to the experience, and she she already. Uh, she would already know what to expect before stepping outside. Um, yeah. but so I don't know. I, I, I'm having trouble I, with the intuition. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So I, I'm with Dennett and have been since I first discovered this. So it's really simple. For those who aren't aware, here's just about the shortest, most clear version of this thought experiment that I can come up with. Mary is a scientist who knows everything there is to know about color. But Mary has lived her entire existence in a black and white room with no color at all. Mary opens yeah. the door, opens the window, and out into a world with color and experiences color directly for the first time. Does Mary learn anything new about color? If she does, then there's something experiential about color, and that's they're going to call that qualia, and then they're going to say physicalism is false. But here's the, here's the rub. No, if you defined Mary as Mary knows everything about color, then by definition, Mary does not she learn knows. anything new when she opens the door. What's happening here is in this Mary's color room argument, it is a cheat. It is, it is exploiting our intuitions that if Mary's never experienced color, when she does experience color, she will, of course, learn something new. And she might, but she won't learn anything new about color. She'll learn something new about her experience, which is different. If you define Mary as knowing everything about color, then she does not learn anything new, period. Oh, I was going to say, even if she hasn't, this is like a, probably a separate question. Um, even if she doesn't 
uh, if she hasn't seen colours, right, if, if all she's seen all her life is a black and white room, would she experience colour by rubbing her eyes or, you know, in after images from light perception or even when she dreams? Sometimes yeah, no, when you poke is... your eye, you can see yeah. I, I understand what you're saying, but you're you're making that conclusion based on someone who does experience color. The the thought experiment is specifically constructed that she knows everything about color, but has not and cannot uh, inside this room experience anything about color. That's the whole right. purpose of the thought experiment. And so, yeah, oh, if she rubs her eyes, she might, yes, but that won't happen to Mary in this weird thought experiment. I've only got one more query and then we're done, yeah? Hey. Is that all right, yeah? Yeah, cheers. Okay. Um, so basically, Jackson, he also describes himself as a, an epiphenomenalist. So basically, he says that physical states cause mental states, but the latter doesn't have an effect on the former. But then I think to myself, how can epiphenomenalism be true when the very fact of being consciously awake causes us to talk about consciousness? Isn't that consciousness influencing physical events? Or perhaps it's not influencing anything. It's, it's just an illusion like free will. And the sense of experience merely accompanies brain activity. I mean, what, what, what's your take on it? I don't have one. I don't know enough. The, the color experiment and qualia, I've studied enough where I have some kind of comfort talking about. I have no such comfort with epiphenomenalism. Yeah, it's, it's, it's still a puzzle, basically, isn't it? Well, I, I don't understand it well enough because I haven't studied it. I could maybe go study it and give you my thoughts in a couple hours, but or it might take a couple decades. But I don't know because I yeah. don't currently have those thoughts. Yeah. Seems like something Same I'll here. enjoy I mean, thinking that, about that, next that, time I'm high. True. Yeah, I know. I know we touched upon the subject briefly, Jimmy. It's just I'm still struggling with it. And, yeah, I get it. Uh, you know, I'm not an expert, obviously. My friend's shit, and, and I tend to defer to... Uh, you know, uh, experts, but then they tend to contradict one another. You know, uh, I've read Dan Dennett's uh, Consciousness Explained. It's a good book. And now yeah. I'm reading, I'm currently reading uh, uh, called, one called Sentience by, I forget his name now, Humphrey, something Humphrey. <laughs> I can't remember his name. He works with that, uh, Dennett, but he sort of disagrees with him on a number of things like to do with his I'm still reading the book. It suddenly sounds Computer. like you are a mile away. Yeah, yeah we, lost, we lost audio there. Understand. I I'll just go ahead and let you go at this point, Orlando. I, yeah. I, we got to answer one of your questions and not the other, but I appreciate the question. Hopefully we can figure out what's going on with the audio in case you have to call back in. We have two more callers. Um, yeah. And so I, I would like them both to hang on because, um, well, to heck with it. We'll just go straight to Andrew in Florida is a theist, and theists will always have priorities in the show. Prons are he, him. Andrew, welcome to the Sunday show. You're live on the line. <clears throat> Happy Sunday, gentlemen. Yeah. Andrew, can I ask you a Hello. question beforehand, before we get started? Sure. Is our answer to what you're about to posit going to be the same one you've received, I think, like eight times now, when in the past you called to say that the, like, the, the Mary miracles were... Uh, proof of God. You, you've done a bunch of these, and I, and I feel like the answer is the same every time. Is this, do you think this is going to be a new challenge, or is it basically going to be you just listing your most recent, and we're going to say the same thing we've said so far every time? Um, answer? I don't understand the question. Okay, then just go, go ahead and pause it, your thing, because we've done this a bunch of times, and I think I know how it's going to go, but go ahead and posit your, uh, uh, the thing you want to tell us. Um, okay. Uh, the resurrection of the nation of Israel, you know, it's a supernatural fulfillment of prophecy. Um, and so it confirms the promises that God made to his people, Israel, and you can't exist if there are no promises. I mean, you, All right. So let's, let's slow your roll real quick, Andrew. Did. I need you to define resurrection because clearly you don't mean the way the word resurrection usually means in Christianity. Yeah, and you just said you can't live without right. promises, and I can absolutely live without promises. So let's hear, Andrew, because I'd love for this to go well. Yeah, um, There have been no other theistic callers. You are going to probably be the best theistic caller of the day no matter what, 
<laughs> and I'm willing to sit with you and sort all this out over the next 20 to 25 minutes if that's what it takes. So just be ready to pause frequently because when you say the supernatural resurrection of the nation of Israel, I have no clue what you're talking about. And I yeah. do this for a living. Exactly. So we're going to need better explanations so that we can get to what you're, you're actually arguing for, because I'd love to address it fairly. Yeah. Can we start with defining resurrection, Andrew? Um, yeah. The, 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 the dancing skeletons in Ezekiel, that vision where the, the nation of Israel be raised up from the dead, like, so the nation of Israel was, was dead, meaning it wasn't a nation anymore. They were destroyed. They were disbanded. They lost their identity as a people. And what I mean, um, I, I guess it's, I just, the, red, the word resurrection comes from that vision in Ezekiel of the dancing bones. Um, what I mean is... Okay, but the act, nation, real quick, the act of the resurrection itself isn't a resurrection. You're saying, let's say we took Florida and we changed its name to Cheese Place. That doesn't make any sense, but now Florida is Cheese Place and it's Cheese Place for a thousand years. And then a thousand years from now, we change it from Cheese Place back to Florida. And that's the act of the resurrection in your example, correct? It's a, that that would be a similar thing. We're resurrecting Florida. Um, um, I don't think that's an accurate representation of what I, of, of what What's I mean missing? by Israel. I mean, you've disbanded. Okay, let's just let's use Cuba. I want to use. I I prefer to use Cuba. If that's okay with. Fine. Me, go ahead. As an example, so let's just say you killed the majority of the Cubans. You've intermingled with them, and you've disbanded their country. And God spoke to the Cubans saying, you guys are going to come back to the land. I'm going to gather you from the four corners of the earth. And a bunch of nations hate the Cuban people and tried to destroy them. And then they came back as a nation thousands of years later. That, that would confirm a supernatural. It, it confirms divine revelation. No, it, it doesn't. It confirms divine revelation. It definitely does not. That's no. my argument. In your example, okay. you said, and wrong. then God speaks and we have no record of that. We only have records of people saying God spoke. Correct? Um, yeah, people. In the okay. Bible is written by people. Right. And so if you yeah. write an old book and it's about a specific group of people and you build a religion surrounding that and you say in the future, this is going to happen and the people who make it happen had access to that book and followed that religion, one of two things you have two options, maybe more. Either the revelation was fulfilled because God did something, or the revelation was fulfilled because the people had access to the revelation and caused it to be fulfilled. Is that correct? Both. Yes, yes. It's sure, correct. those are your two I'm options. Saying... So how do you determine whether, which option is the thing that happened? Because the thing that happened, the way I'm doing it is that the thing that happened had to be a supernatural event. It was impossible for it to happen. They didn't just come back out of nowhere. They survived Why? several oh countries with nuclear You didn't answer my question. Trying you, to kill yeah, I'm sorry. at all. Oh, so, okay. Jimmy, Jimmy's trying to get uh, to the point of, of yeah. how did you determine that it required a supernatural intervention? And your answer was because I said it required a supernatural intervention. Basically. That's not an answer. Uh, uh, can I try again? Yes. Sure. How do you know um, it requires supernatural intervention? Because it was an impossible event. It couldn't have happened naturally. Well, how but do you know it's impossible? Okay. Stop. What you're saying, Andrew is that it is impossible for this to happen without supernatural intervention. We asked you, how do you know it required supernatural intervention? And you're saying it's impossible without supernatural intervention. That is not an answer to our question. How do you know, how do you prove that it was impossible without supernatural intervention? Um... It's never been done in history. How Andrew? You, oh my God, you also Ray don't Andrew, know that. Are you saying I'm, that something that happens for the first time in history is always supernatural? 
No. Okay, no. so then uh, retract well, that, what because said. what you just said, what you just said is not in any way a demonstration of why it must be supernatural. Saying something's never happened in history before doesn't mean that it's supernatural. So once again, how do you prove that this is this cannot happen without supernatural intervention? How do you prove that? You look at the event and the circumstances around the event, and you see that it cannot happen through natural means. It's you see a miracle in the making. Do you no, want to know, Andrew? Andrew, I agree. We should look at the event and the circumstances around the event. But how do you conclude from the event and the circumstances around it that it requires supernatural intervention? We've asked you, and you repeatedly say the same thing without giving us any way, in no argument, no evidence not even an analogy you just keep going this couldn't happen this couldn't happen look at the events it couldn't happen look at the circumstances it couldn't happen be specific do you have a test methodology that can confirm supernatural causation a test methodology um no i'm, I'm using reason no, no, no. If you don't have a test methodology that can confirm supernatural causation, then you cannot conclude supernatural causation. Um, if you saw a dinosaur today, um, that would be a miracle. And no, I wouldn't. wouldn't. I, I can literally go look at alligators no, no, at any time. I can, I can see a dinosaur today. I have seen dinosaurs today. But <laughs> that in no way addresses my question. If you don't have some way to test and show whether or not something is supernatural, then you cannot reasonably conclude that it's supernatural, right? Um. Um, I, that's a tough question. Well, uh, it's not a I, tough question. Um, hey, okay, let's, let's set it, ignore everything in the conversation that we're having, okay? Let's say that I've been having a weird dream, and I've decided that these dreams are from Aliens in another galaxy projecting thoughts into my head while I'm asleep. That's the conclusion I've reached. And Jimmy comes up to me and says, well, I was going to tee it up, but Jimmy comes up to me and says, I wasn't how do you demonstrate that it is actually an alien yeah. that put this dream in your head? And my answer is it had to be an alien. It had to be an alien because I said it could only happen from an alien. Uh, and then somebody else said, Matt, do you have a methodology by which you can show when and how aliens are sending things into your dreams? And I said, no, I don't. And then somebody said, if you don't have any way to test whether or not aliens are sending things into your dreams, then you cannot rationally reach the conclusion that they're actually doing it, right? And I would have to say, right. And that's exactly what you have to say right now. It doesn't become, oh, that's a hard question. No, it is a really, really, really easy question. The, the thing that's difficult about it is that it's such an easy question, it exposes that you are reaching conclusions when you don't have any mechanism that would allow you to reach those conclusions with evidentiary warrant. Um. Okay. Um, so test you need a test methodology to to demonstrate something supernatural occurring. Um, I mean, I don't have the supernatural tools to do that. Um, and Nobody I have, does. I don't have alien technology to determine if I, if I if we experience aliens. We're, we're limited with, with what we have on Earth. Yeah, nobody has meth nobody has any test methodology in the history of human beings. Nobody has ever been able to demonstrate anything supernatural exists 
or that anything supernatural can impact anything detectably in the natural world. That's never, ever happened. And so, since you admit that you don't have the tools, that means that you cannot conclude that the resurrection of the nation of Israel required supernatural intervention, especially when all of the evidence towards the nation of Israel points to completely natural causes, exactly. actual human beings working towards a goal. Just like when I order a medium rare steak at the restaurant, the waiter isn't relying on the supernatural and isn't fulfilling prophecy when he brings me a medium rare snake, a steak. <laughs> steak. <laughs> that would be funny. Andrew, I have a couple questions for you based on some of the answers you tried to give because I, I want to get to the core of where your mistake is happening. Are you under the impression that the nation of Israel, after ending, that people who were ethnically or religiously Jewish went extinct at some point between, I don't remember when it was, was it 800 BC-ish? And, and then 1950 or whenever Israel uh, was declared a state oh, again. It, it was about 70 C. Okay. It, yeah, it, I'm referring to the first century destruction, which should have annihilated them completely as an ethnic group. No, nobody has ever. No. Why? Why do you think that that is true? Oh, because cause, cause most of them were killed. Many of them were killed. No, but let's say, killed. even if you were right, you just didn't, you literally just changed from all to most. Do you know how many people it takes to start a new population? If you're gross, it's only two. Okay. I'm saying, I, I'm, I don't know if I said all. I'm saying most of them were killed in, in the first century. And then throughout the upcoming century, they intermingled and basically it went extinct. Like they intermingled with a bunch of different no, nations. And a bunch no, of different no, they didn't. They no, they didn't, which is how... They didn't go extinct, which is how six million of them were fucking killed in the Holocaust. Right. They kept their they kept their identity as a Jewish people. That's God protecting His remnant. Is I, what is which is a fulfillment of prophecy. That's my point. That. So your no. supernatural event is that you believe because you are incredulous. To be clear. You believe that after the destruction of Israel, that over the course of a couple thousand years, the ethnicity would have been completely just taken off of the planet. It just wouldn't have existed. And so then the supernatural event was what? They went extinct and then somebody was magically ethnically Jewish again one day and that person's descendants are all of the people. Somebody would have been born either like Jesus was born without, uh, well, without either parents or that their DNA was changed back to ethnic Judaism. And that's the point of the miracle. Cause every, I, I can't even figure out a way to make it work as a magic trick, let alone the fact it, that these people did not go extinct. This is, and I'm, I'm going to stop right after I say this. I'm not saying this just to be mean, I thought Jimmy was being a complete prick when he asked you if you thought that they went extinct because I didn't think that there was any way in hell anybody could possibly think that. Yeah. And now to know that you do think that, um, this is just not even fair. You don't understand at all how to demonstrate supernatural necessity, causation. You don't have any methodology to verify your conclusions. And you believe things that are so obviously not a part of reality with with regard to true things like you know the destruction of the jewish temple and whether or not jews went extinct or anything else you believe things that are so outside the realm of reality that it almost doesn't even matter that you believe that there's a god or that this is proof of god you need some fundamental like basic education on the facts of reality if you think that the Jews went extinct after the destruction of the temple. No, 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 not That's extinct. Just... I'm sorry for interrupting. Um, not extinct. That was not your extinct. word. That God preserved the remnant. They should have gone extinct. I didn't say they went, all of them went literally extinct. I, I, 
no, they, no, they shouldn't the have gone extinct. No, no, extinct. they should not have gone extinct. Your, your, your assertion that they should have gone extinct and were preserved by God is wrong at every turn. There's nothing, there's no reason to conclude that they should have gone extinct. And even if there was a likelihood of extinction, there's no reason to conclude that God had anything to do with them not going extinct. You, you are severe, like, the, you have some break with reality. Andrew, okay. when did uh uh how did God save turtles from extinction? <laughs> what? Do you believe that God saved turtles from extinction? Uh no. Okay, they, they well a catastrophic it. event happened to the earth which wiped out the dinosaurs and yet turtles exist. And they were there then and they are here now. So what did God do? Why, okay. wh wh why, why can turtles exist with no supernatural interaction? Because you just said you don't think that God did that. But Jews from a 2,000 years ago cannot. They, they could. But becoming a nation... No, again, no, 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 Andrew. Well, you don't the, get to the say they could. Did. You said it's impossible without a supernatural act for the Jews to have not gone extinct. That was your position. You don't get a switch to they could. Yeah. And you don't get to switch to they became a nation again because we've already demonstrated thoroughly that your claims about them becoming a nation requiring supernatural intervention are false. Yep. Okay, so the preservation argument, okay, knocked down and the nation argument becoming a nation fulfilling prophecy that argument okay knocked down um cool let's just do a different one anything else andrew can we just abandon the nation of israel argument completely then and you can say that you haven't you haven't succeeded especially to the mind of a skeptic in demonstrating those and just give us a good reason to believe in god yeah <laughs> um i think i've given you guys everything i have so i i'm out, i'm out of reasons. cool so you're admitting that you have no good reasons to believe in god so are, are you are you no longer a believer no i i still believe in god um why I so don't... so why would you believe in something if you don't have any good reason to believe it um i don't i don't I can't really choose whether I believe it or not. I guess um, I, I agree, I but what do. you're saying is that you're what you're saying is that you are convinced that you don't have a good reason, and you are convinced that God is real. So, what bad reason is convincing you that God is real? I don't know if this is a reason. Um, it's just I've asked in this in this show before. Um, you guys haven't falsified that God exists. So the God doesn't exist. You haven't falsified the existence of God. And have you demonstrated you that your God, I assume ha it's have the you, Andrew, first of all, is something true until it's proven false? Some things. Yes. Yeah, some things. No. no, 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 no. Is the, name something that is true merely because someone hasn't shown it is false. That the um, th that the universe came into being. We're no, that's that. not true. Uh, that's not true. That's not true until it's proven false. That is not true merely because someone hasn't proven it false yet. And 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 if your God proposition isn't falsifiable, then you can't fault us for not falsifying that which is not falsifiable. So present a falsifiable God proposition that you accept. Falsifiable. Um, you, do you know uh, what that means? I, I tried. I tried. I called in with the. I called in with do, a. Do you know what natural, falsifiable means? Thing. Yeah, they can be proven wrong. Okay, so give me a god. Does the god that you believe in can it be proven wrong? Um. I know that certain claims in the Bible can be proven wrong. That's not what I asked. 
it would really be useful, Andrew, if you'd answer the question you're asked and not deflect to something else that's more comforting. Can the God that you believe in be proven false? No. No. Then you are accepting an unfalsifiable position, and you are doing it while admitting that you have no good evidence for it, and that your only objection is that people haven't proven you wrong, but you believe something that can't be proven wrong. You are a walking demonstration of irrationality. You are admitting that you have no good reason to believe something, and the very thing you believe is something that nobody, no rational person could or should accept, and yet you are standing there in defiance, proclaiming that you're going to believe anyway, that you keep trying to prove it, and that it's our fault for not falsifying the unfalsifiable. You, you, have, you have abandoned reality entirely, Andrew, and you've done it all so that you can be comfortable thinking there's a magic being who loves you, and it's not true. Andrew, I've, There are I've, real people who love you, but not a magic being. I have another question or two that I think is going to make it sound like I might just be trying to be a prick again, but it, I pr I promise it's going somewhere. You, do you I was wrong. Yeah. Do, Andrew, do you, uh, uh, do you believe that America landed on the moon in 1969? Yes. You do? Uh, do you believe in Bigfoot? No. Okay. And the reason why I'm asking you this is because you are a religious conspiracy theorist. And I was curious whether or not that emerges out beyond. And I think what might be useful to you, and actually I'm excited to hear you say no to the second and yes to the first. I think what would be useful to you is to research why people fall for conspiracies because your level of, they, they were so destroyed by my very basic surface level understanding that there's no way, it's impossible that they wouldn't have gone extinct. Truly something incredible has to have explained all of this. That is conspiracy theorist thinking. I wouldn't even just call it plain religious thinking because there are people who do similar stuff and it's just lazy apologetics. Yours is a, an attachment to your incredulity. And there's a thing called an argument from incredulity that I was going to accuse you of a couple times. Uh, Yours, you are thinking when it comes to your religion exactly like a conspiracy theorist. And if there's something that, if your God exists and is it is and is true and your belief is true, reading a book about why conspiracy theorists uh, think the way they do or why conspiracies take hold isn't going to change that that God exists or doesn't exist. But you might change how you evaluate and how you reason. And I don't mean it as an insult. You sound exactly like a conspiracy theorist when you call in defending this. You call it in, I, I, unless I'm mistaking you for somebody else, defending miracles surrounding Mary. Um, you are uh, uh, like statues and apparitions of Mary. You sound exactly like a conspiracy theorist, except that you're going to find acceptance amongst religious people because they will abide conspiracies in their circles. Let me, let me, let me, let me stop it right here, Andrew. Because we only got a couple minutes left, and I want to take one more call, and then I know Jimmy's got to get on, I guess, to do. First of all, thank you for calling, and yep. thank you for being honest in the discussion. Um, when we slow stuff down and we get through it, we get to a better understanding. Um, if you don't ever call back, that's up to you. If you want to call back, please just call back and continue to be honest. If you have bad arguments, yeah. I'm going to let you know, and you know we can uh, agree or disagree. But so far, it's been... It seems to me that the thing you're struggling with is you really, really sincerely believe something. It seems intuitively uh, obvious to you and that you haven't been given the tools to really analyze that. And maybe, maybe we're starting to touch on those tools. But if it turns out you are correct, I absolutely want to know it. So call us back another time, do some research on falsification um, and, and better potentially better arguments set aside than the nation of Israel and, uh, and that kind of stuff. And we can try again another time. Sound good. Okay. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks. All right. Final call for today. 
Uh, Lewis, an atheist, is calling in from Abu Dhabi. Pronouns are he, him. Welcome to the Sunday show on the line. You are live, Lewis. Cool. Uh, I have one question. Um, it's basically the same question that I watched the debate. Uh, it was turned into a documentary with Christopher Hitchens and Douglas Wilson. And I thought it was quite an interesting question. I think they were driving in the car at some point, sitting in the back seat, and um, Christopher Hitchens was posed the question, if he could rid the world of religion, literally one person left to convince, would he do it? And it was interesting that he said no, because uh, in a follow-up uh, conversation they had the, the four horsemen, um, Richard Dawkins also, they, they discussed this point. Um, and Richard Dawkins was quite appalled that he said no, you know, he wouldn't do it. So I'm basically yeah. just posing the same question uh, to you, just to see. Um, it's probably not an easy question, but it's just no, it's, uh, it's very just to see your point of view. Question. And then at the, at the same time, why? It, why or why not? It, That's it. Yeah, it's a very easy question, and my answer is yes, absolutely. I wouldn't do it like a magic wand or whatever. I want it to go away uh, for good reasons. If it's not true, if it's irrational, I want that to be understood and I want religion to go away for that reason. Uh, I have no, Hitchens had this, uh, and the reason it's an easy question is because I've been thinking about it since that conversation occurred uh, Me too. and 15 years ago. Yeah. And Hitchens has this kind of fondness that oh, well, we wouldn't want to entirely get rid of religion. We would want to keep it because, you know, the stories and the impact and how it's resonated there. And, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily want the world to be completely dry and rational and everything else. I think everything about that answer is stupid yeah. and that I would absolutely eliminate. My goal is to eliminate irrationality, which will include religion from the world. Um, and if religion isn't irrational, if it's true, then I want to know that. Yeah, the, the answer he gave was wild because there was even a clarifying question asked by Sam Harris to him about, like, you're not saying you would keep it so you would just have people to argue with because you'd be bored without it. <laughs> and Hitchin says yeah. something along the lines, I dare say I am saying that. Like, it, it's, it's as though somebody was asking him if he would get rid of badminton. And he's like, well, that's my favorite sport. Absolutely not. If it only had to be, you know, if there was less people to play against, as long as I could play against them still, that'd be good. But... Uh, yeah, it's there. There are a few times where I liked a lot of Christopher Hitchens' debates and points and argue, arguments. We disagreed on some things, and then there was a couple of things where I went, "That's full on stupid." What you just said, uh, and that's yeah. that's one of them. Yeah, yep, it's, it's, it's kind of like a, it's it's kind of contradictory to like it's basically the same question when somebody asked, and I asked him a few times, like, "Why would you want to take something away from something that gives meaning to so many people?" and replace it with something that gives meaning to nobody. And then he was very vehement on that, like, look, it's rationality. If you believe something that's outrageous, then no, if it's not rational, don't believe it. So it's kind of contradictory. So, yeah, I mean, my answer was yes, yeah, I would 100%. If it doesn't make sense, don't believe it. Yeah. Yeah, it's an cool. interesting Big hypothetical. <laughs> cool. Lewis, I want to thank you for thank you calling because now I have the opportunity to say Abu Dhabi, which I just enjoy. There's something very pleasant about the, the saying Abu Dhabi. <laughs> it is. It, it's, it's a nice place. It's a nice place to live. You guys should come visit. Uh, yeah, I just oh, I guess love that. you can't express your views that freely. Uh, it, it has evolved through the years, uh, honestly. Like, I consider myself, you know, an atheist. When somebody asks me, like, what religion are you? And I just say, well, none. <laughs> and they seem to be fine with it now. Um, so, yeah. Lewis, I'd love to have a, to I, see a debate here one day. Lewis, <laughs> I, have, I have a question in response to what you just said. Um, yes. You said you say none, and they're receptive now. If you said atheist, would that change their reception? Um, well, I say none, and then, then they jump to conclusion. They're like, you don't believe in anything. And then I say, no, I consider myself to be an agnostic. But at the same time, if somebody doesn't really understand what agnostic is and they want yeah. to label me as an atheist, sure. I'm okay with that too. But I, I, no I, I guess I just want to ask, is there a difference in if you just said atheist, 
would you get a different general response from receptiveness from saying agnostic or saying none? Is is atheist still a more taboo word than all the other ones there or no? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, it depends on the context. You know, if you know, it depends on who you meet. If sure. you meet the the younger generation, um, they're a lot more like acceptance of it. Uh, they're a lot more westernized. I think some of the older people you meet, they might be a bit more prejudiced towards that. Interesting. Wow. Cool. But, but things I are appreciate changing. the question. Things everything else. A lot here. Cool. Yeah. No, that's it. Great. Big fans. Thanks. Well, we have we have hit fight the top the of the fight. hour. We got to run. But thank <laughs> you so much, Lewis, uh, and thank you, uh, Jimmy, who, yeah. who wasn't a prick. And my apologies for assuming you were being one because I was like, "Are you are you really asking this guy?" And then boom, when he said yes, I was just like, my whole world just crumbled as yeah. to yeah. how how confused. I, I shouldn't say you know stupid or anything. Else. How confused someone can be about very kind of plain aspects of reality. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but you've dealt with that caller much more than I have, I think. Yeah, he actually called last Wednesday, but I don't know if he got through. Uh, he was mm. he was wanted to ask about be good lyrics. Just so you know, we don't. I, I already suspended lines. The Aaron is out of town, so I, I'm not. We don't have to end in the next five seconds, to, or we're rude to somebody. We can. But I do softly. I got it. Okay, great. Uh, <laughs> uh, then quick recap of announcements. Skep talk tomorrow. Uh, well, just watch all the shows this week and then be watch on the lookout. Ball. We are, I think actually I just got confirmation. So let me go ahead and announce this. Uh, I just want to double check and make sure. Yes. Okay. Everybody put it on your calendar. We're going to make it a big fucking ruckus. It's going to be a huge event on June 20 shit. June 24th. 24th. June 24th, we will be having a fundraiser and it's going to be an incredible event, probably five or six hours long. The stuff that we're already planning, if I didn't produce, I would independently sit down and watch it. And that yeah. is a lot for me to say. I don't watch anything that I'm a part of or my friends are a part of, to tell you the truth. Uh, but this is going to be a big deal. So uh, that'll be June 24th. It's going to be a Saturday. It's going to be an incredible event and it will be a fundraiser for the Recovering from Religion Foundation. Sorry. And yes, that's right. And make sure that you keep watching all the shows in line because there's going to be an announcement coming up soon. If you are and pass this around in addition to Jimmy saying, "Oh, here's a here's a short you can pass to your religious friends." If you're a theist and for whatever reason you've decided, "Oh, I'm not going to call in and let them have all the power and all the control and whatever else or they they aren't honest or there's not going to be a thing." We're putting something together so that you can apply. Mhm. Mm to essentially be a participant in live discussions. I don't necessarily want to call it a debate, call it a debate, um, but things like that where you will get pr provided you're not just going to get on and ramble racial insults and things like that. Um, a specific allotment of time, like you would in a debate, to present your case um, because the conversations have gotten incredibly frustrating over the years. I'm I've been doing this for 19 years plus. And the theists are, are not getting any better. And some of them don't want to call in and they they've convinced themselves. Oh, well, these guys don't really want to have a scene. And I'm not doing an imitation of them or an impersonation of them. I'm putting on a specific mocking tone to characterize the thought behind that and not the person. Um, that's a <laughs> side Matt and point. I were that's arguing really about relevant. up until the show started what qualifies as an impression, and I don't see this distinction he makes as meaningful. But yes. Well, if I wanted to do an impression of Ronald Reagan, I'd say, well, Nancy and I were talking, you know, I could do that. That's but if a, I wanted to do... Yeah, a vocal, that's an a good vocal impression, for sure. Like yeah, trying to, yeah, character. Mm -hmm. But if I said, Ronald Reagan said, gosh, we just say no to drugs. I'm not doing an impression of him. I'm putting on a mocking tone specifically. It's not like, oh, look how good my impression of Ronald Reagan is. I believe you are. It's case, just a different category of impression is, is, is yeah, my own position. Yeah, that's fine. So whatever I was getting ready to finish saying, and then we got yeah. distracted because we were having a disagreement about terminology there, but there's going to be a place. So if you're like, Oh, I haven't wanted to call because I'm not going to all, all Matt's going to do is put me on mute and hang up on me. First of all, go listen to the last call. Cause that's exactly not what happened. And it's yeah. not what happens anytime 
you are honest in conversation. So really what's happening by theists not calling in, they're admitting that they cannot or will not be honest in conversation. They will not play fair. They want to, to preach. They want to say whatever they want without actually being challenged on it. And if that's the case, we're going to meet you halfway maybe by giving you an opportunity to call into a specific show, get your allotted time in, and then face the gauntlet of questions. So yeah, there, that's as easy as I can be. I, I wanted like a cool tagline to go out on, like prepare yourself. The end boss is coming or something like that. But I don't know. It's, it's, uh, something. are you prepared for the final boss or the end boss? The end boss. Damn it. I, I screwed it up. Back up. See, why am I doing it? I'm just going to end on instead on, uh, Hey guys, uh, why are there still turtles? We're pretending our mics aren't still active. Yes. Although me typing on my keyboard. <laughs>